It is, it is. Yesterday, we did this guy uh, to the point that you see him now on yesterday's stream. I'm going to pull that VOD over to YouTube because I think it would help people understand how to get a really cool skin tone real quick. And uh, and I'm contemplating doing a little bit of a wash right now, like our flesh wash, and just uh, thin it way down. I'm going to do it. It may not be the right decision. This may be bad decision making at its finest, but we're doing it anyway because I mean, I mean, I don't mean, know. Flesh wash. Yeah, Chris, I'm gonna have words with him about all the extra bits. By the way, I don't, I don't think that was necessary. Some flash wash. We went a little crazy. Don't always gotta go crazy. People new to the hobby always feel like they gotta go crazy and they learn real quick. Sometimes crazy ain't better. <laughs> Sometimes simple is really cool. Ranted, what's going on? Streams are for bad decisions. I'm not with you. I feel like it's not too far off from the truth. He's like, I got a round number. <laughs> Division ring. I think you made him. I think I made a mistake. I bought in on Chimera Kickstarter just to arrive. You realize how the dumb bottles don't fit in any storage solution. Well, I mean, pro or curl. <laughs> Dork, what's going on? But crazy is more fun. I'm not going to deny you that. I won't deny you that. All right, here's a bunch of. Uh, Glaze wash medium to thin it out. Boom. Easily doubled our material there. And then how about just a spritz? Just a tiny spritz of water. Like that. Seems good, I like. Very good, very nice. Much better if you go like this. Uh, stir stick. Use the bottom side of the handle whenever my adult brain cell kicks in. What is this milestone achieved thing? All right, there we go. Boom, bam, boom, bam, and boom, and bam. All right, so then this should be very, very thin. Oh, yeah, almost non-existent. Perfect. Perfect. Just slop this on here. Bam. Bam. Sometimes it's just as easy as slopping it on. Like magic. Thinning the washes with the glazed wash medium keeps them fairly thick, which is what I'm hoping for here. So they don't get all soupy and run all over the place. That's not what I want. I just want 
a lot of uh, very light filtering going on here over the whole model. Our washes are generally a little thicker anyway. You may be used to. And the glaze wash medium just helps keep them that way. I don't need a shade necessarily. I need this filter. Give me a good amount of color on here. It will naturally shade because that's what it does. But I'm not looking to darken up a ton. As you can see, we already had really good contrast. But just because you set up good contrast on your model does not mean you cannot use a wash. A lot of people will sometimes think that, hey, you know, I don't need a wash because I already did, you know, all of this contrast. So I don't need a shade. And they forget that washes are simply filters, too. They don't have to always be about dumping a bunch of shadow on a model, like with a Nuln Oil or Agrax or whatever. They are equally valid as just a way to introduce a color that can be a blending agent on the model is what I'm looking for here. Help get a little bit of our dry brushed skin tone blended out. And to unify our shadow color and our highlighted side here. Smudge that right around the nose there again. So that's why I thinned it way down so that I can have it just be enough pigment to kind of give us a little bit more fleshy warmth everywhere. Darken the skin tone up before I come in and do my final highlighting that we're going to do with the airbrush. Bada boom, bada bing. Life is good. Try to remember not to leave any of your wash in an open area where it's not blending to the edges. So I've got to be careful here around this arm. Everybody's having a great end of the week. It is Friday. If nobody's told you, gang, oh, it's Friday. Hope you got some fun stuff planned on your weekend. Okay, we're going to work on the troll a little bit. We're going to look at the uh, February challenge entries here today. Lots to do, folks. Lots to do. Whole model gets this color regardless of if the color is going to do a whole lot visually in the area you put it. Remember that you're not always going to get a huge amount of traction or change, if you will. 
everywhere you put a color, that doesn't mean avoid it, right? Sometimes what seems like a lack or, or like you could find some efficiency, like, oh, this watch isn't really going to change the shadow I'm doing right here, so why even put it there? You put it there because it does change it in hue, even if just a fraction. And so you want to make sure you get everywhere because we're adding a little bit more of a reddish brown color to all of this with the flesh wash, right? If you do not add it to an area, then that area may look like it was, you know, not completed. And that can be a problem. This I'm really liking. Turns out, good idea. Very good idea. New Twitch spam, exactly. Participation awards. <laughs> He's not supposed to wash the trolls. I mean, dooba babu, but it's getting him dirtier. So does that, is that still count? Shall you shampoo your troll as well? Hey, what kind of channel do you think this is, buddy? Went to a local con last week and he got first in the single figure category. Death Punch, that's awesome. Congratulations. That's absolutely awesome. Dorkosaurus, a place local to buy what at? What'd I miss? Our paints? Question mark? Again, you can see no rhyme or reason how I'm doing this, just making sure I'm covering everywhere. Because I'm using the wash more as a filter uh, than anything, it's, it's all about just coverage, not how it flows into recesses and such, like I was saying. Making sure that I get an equal amount everywhere, almost. It is kind of piling up in recesses like a wash should do anyway. Um... But because it's not a real heavy coloring and not a big difference over the base coat colors that we have already, it's not going to show. Like if I had done black on this, we would have seen much more of an actual kind of wash coverage happening here. But you don't really need that. I'm hoping to have our purples and magentas and everything survive this wash pretty well. Cross his fingers. See if we can make that happen. Perhaps is a boy dog.
Yo, Sue, what's going on? You're late because Malev? 100% his fault? Four more hours till you can get back to painting? Painting tonight and making sausage gravy tomorrow just so you can paint all day tomorrow. Then Sunday you have D&D &D, and then you'll be watching wrestling with friends while enjoy pizza and beer. You've needed a weekend like this for a while. Walking harder, I think everybody's jealous. I mean, I'd even sit through wrestling for pizza with buddies. Dork, that's awesome. Dorkosaurus. Mo, what's happening, man? Dark Soul Paladin. Uh, just recently jumped on the Procurl team. Love the paints and all the colors you guys do. Thank you very much. I was wondering when you guys might have your brush sets available. Looking for the end of the month, like uh, mid to late March. Hoping by Adepticon, but I don't know that I can guarantee that. But sometime uh, in March, if not, then early April, if they get pushed for whatever reason. Playing some magic, video games, mini building. Just what you need before a week of on call. I hear it. I hear it. All right. I think I got all the parts, right? I feel like we got all the parts. Get the airbrush. Just use it for air. Hold the airbrush back about a foot and a half, foot, foot and a half. Speed dry all of our Walsh. This will mat everything down really quick, like you see, too. We thinned a lot of our base layers, and the uh, dark magenta is actually a fairly satin color. At the end of the day, uh, the dark magenta is not near as matte, nor as dark purple as some of the other colors. So to get rid of a lot of the shine before I go in and do the uh, highlights with the airbrush, the wash is a really, really good way to do that. You can see probably how it has instantly dulled down everything. But hopefully you can also tell how uh, safe it was to use a wash as an overall filter just by thinning it with our glaze wash medium. Your new paint rack you got is only just over a third full. It's made for Pro Acryl, so you need more colors. You literally have every color we have, and it's only a third full. That means you built your rack for 270 paints? I think at the at the high end, we're looking to have 143? 144? Then we change to uh, Monument Pizza and Libations. Oh, and also paints. <laughs> Just keep making colors. Yeah, I think we're going to top off at like 144, probably 150. We'll probably find a way to sneak in some extras there. We've got to redo like the retail rack if we get much more. Right? We already have to figure out a way to build a... Uh, addition to the retail rack for all the signature series retailers are going to get mad at us they can't fit our stuff anywhere oh yes the wash was a grand idea
All right, there's a couple of puddles there that are going to have to dry on their own because I'm, I'm not going to sit here and spray them all day. But to give you an idea of how big a difference that made, right? Blended everything. Remember, we had a little bit of roughness on his belly from the, the dry brushing, right? We had a little bit of a hard line here on the forearm where we went from highlight to shade, and now the, the uh, flesh wash has brought all that together. Man, our washes are just leaps and bounds above what you're used to if you've done washes before. That wash over the top of that skin just got rid of everything that was heavy-handed about it. Blended everything back perfectly. Still get that purple veining and coloration that we wanted on it. So the wash didn't get rid of any of our purple or magenta or flesh tones or any of that. Just kind of restructured them. Let them all kind of flow together. We were a little rough with the dry brushing around the belly because it was hitting all the crap around it. Boom. Nasty ass troll. <laughs> Death Bus says, so I'll need to get a replacement shell for a different paint company, I guess. Don't make me come over there. Don't make me come over there. <laughs> Don't make me come over there. Monument edible pro acryl when? Is it is it CBD paint is next on the list? Jay with too many hobbies, it was uh, thinned down 50-50. So we took the flesh wash and thinned it down about 50-50 with uh, glaze wash medium and then a, a spurt of water. Right. So probably, you know, one to one or one and a half to one thinner to wash. And it made an absolute pile of it. So to give you an idea, let's look at the, the flesh wash on its own. Let's create a visual for you here. Show you real quick. The, so let's get a brush that dry brush, no water on it. Right. Here's the wash. How it. Comes right out of the bottle. Okay. And then I guess we should wash that. <laughs> uh, let's put it over my tattoo so you can see it's it's transparency though. Right. So this is the wash, the way it comes directly out of the bottle. That's not right. What did I just put out there? Well, I just put out dark flesh. I'm like, that's not wash. What the hell, Fuse? Misleading the peoples. Like, that's not wash. Nobody's going to buy that. Like, why am I painting my hand? That was dark flesh. I set the wash bottle right next to the dark flesh. Okay, I'm lying. It's a good thing I didn't do that. Bad example. Flesh wash, not dark flesh paint. I'm like, oh, that's pretty thick, dude. All right, much better. These are almost the exact same color, by the way. So I don't... I don't feel bad about my mistakes. All right, look, that's how the wash comes out of the bottle. <laughs> Much better now. Okay, that's the wash right out of the bottle with no thinning. But you'll see here how our thinned version is. Big difference. Barely a filter. Look at how much paint is on the brush. Right. That's just this, right? Just with the, uh, even with layering up, much less pigment than when you get it straight out of the bottle. That's what you're looking for. It still has enough pigment. It still has enough of the matting agent. It still has all of the good bits in it that you're going to get a good filter from it, but it's not just, it's just not going to be as impactful, right? Like here, where it's built up, we had a little bit of a puddle in there. That's really good. Gives us that shadow right across the top of the fold of the belly. A little bit here at the crease of the bicep and shoulder area. We have some spots where we're getting an intrusion of that color. You can see how it piled up on top of that vein right there on the arm. Right here in the underarm. Guy's got like mushrooms growing in his underarm. 
feels like probably not what you want, but hey, you know, you do you. Right? So we do get a little bit of coloring from it. See his spot around that barnacle, back of the knee. So that filter is on the entire model. It has definitely darkened the skin down, but it hasn't overtaken anything that we did from a color perspective. We still have lots of the magentas, right? Lots of the purples and the dark flesh tones that we did. It just smooths everything out. Our washes are fantastic for letting you do stuff like dry brushing highlights and then putting a wash over, and it will tone the highlight down a little bit, obviously, um, but it will smooth it out too. So you can paint faster, use the wash, clears it up, pulls it all in. Ta-da, fantastic. Yeah, with too many hobbies. Yeah, our washes are super flexible, whereas other washes don't hold together and do their job when you thin them. Ours are built to be thin, just like Pro Curl paint. So our washes hold together and still give you a filter all the way through. Now, I don't know that I've... Te that's pretty thin. I don't know that I've tested like 80, 90% thinner. You probably lose a lot of the impact of the color at that. But they're, they're fun to try the whole way from right out of the bottle or not. Uh, give me just a second. I need a bathroom break. I'll be right back. All right. So tonight, <laughs> rise up. It's our stream now. Rebellion is king. Has GW started bullying Monument for stealing Citadel's thunder? Have they started? McSalty, are you asking? Nah, they don't pay attention to their competition. GW doesn't. I don't believe GW thinks they have any competition. They are so much larger than every other company in our industry. I don't think that they really spend a lot of time worrying about it. All right. That's a look and a pretty good. Uh... I did wash my hands. I always wash my hands. I don't know what flavor of soap is in the soap dispenser, though. It's kind of like generic, no, no flavor soap. Flavor. Flavor, probably not the right word here. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. I wash. I bathe. I'm a clean individual. McSalty. Yeah, I worked for GW for a long time. I say a long time. There's been a lot of people there longer than me. But uh, I worked for GW for a number of years back in the uh, mid-2000s, right? From 2004 to 2000 and late 2007, nearly 2008. Um, and uh, 
you know, I don't, I don't know how much they've changed since then. They've grown a lot. I was there in the growth years when there was a lot of pain and suffering and odd business decisions. And since then, they've become a totally different company. So I don't know that I have any true insight. But large companies ha can fall under uh, the pressure of just doing business at that, you know, that volume, right? Small business is the same thing, right? If you ask us what we worry about here at Monument Hobbies, it's what are we doing tomorrow? <laughs> Less so than what is the competition doing? We always look at the market kind of more globally when we can, and we try to be proactive about that when we develop our products, when we look and see what other people are doing and so on and so forth. But the bigger you get, the more you typically can get lost in just the management of today and tomorrow. Um, and, you know, sometimes you forget, you know, look at Sony. Uh, we talk about the Sony story a lot on, on uh, stream over the years. Sony used to be the world's innovator. Everything was Sony. Every new thing was Sony. Sony had their hand in everything that was really interesting. Nowadays, nobody talks about Sony. You know, maybe their game division, maybe movies. But nobody talks about Sony from electronics, really. They don't do anything anymore. They stopped innovating. The standard office soap. Yeah, it is. It's just standard office soap. Sony factory here closed down a few years back. Yeah. They stopped innovating decades ago, right? Um, you know, it's funny, but after the the Walkman, you know, the PlayStation was not an innovation. They were late to market with the PlayStation, really. You know? Um, I, I don't know that they really innovated. You know, they back in the days of the Walkman, the Watchman, the Discman, you know, all of that was Sony's heyday. Um, they took it in the shorts with Betamax. <laughs> but that didn't that didn't kill them. Um, all right, so now we got to figure out a way to create some colors for highlighting, and I think we might be okay taking... No, nah, I don't think we have to use the wash color. Maybe, though. The, the wash and, and shadow flesh gets us a good mix. So let's get some mixing cups here, and let's, let's play around. Right? So one of the other really cool things about our washes is we had this, this guy who the main side was done with dark magenta as a base, shadow flesh over the dark magenta, and then um, the beige red over the top of that. So the shadow flesh and the beige red really created our, um, our general skin tone. So I'm thinking that what we want to do, now that we put the wash over it, it's now wash and shadow flesh and beige red. Does that make sense? Right? You think about how to blend colors to match the work you're doing on the model, and you just have to think about what colors you've used. The problem is, with most other washes on the marketplace, if not all, um, you can't really just mix them in with your paint and get a paint that makes sense, right? That acts like paint. Our washes are different. You can actually just mix them in with your paints, right? So we've got the flesh wash we just put all over there. I'm going to take a little bit of this, like so, okay? Then I'm going to take a uh, shadow flush, right? The same color that we painted on his body. Just with the brush. We're going to put a little shadow flush in there. Like three, put like four drops. Remember that the wash is very, very thin, not very opaque. So don't, Put as much paint into the wash as you have wash. Uh, and then we're going to take and do a little bit of the beige red. One of the new signature series colors from Vince's set. Now the beige red we really just did as a dry brush over the top of all of that. So we don't want a whole lot of the beige red in there either because the beige red was only a, a very minute highlight on the model really. All right, so we do like one two drops of beige red, okay? Grab the butt end of our brush again, and let's make a color here. Now this is going to be minus all of the magentas and such, right? Because we're going for skin highlight now. We're leaving behind all of the base tones, really, and that's fine. Hmm. 
And that gives us a really good color. Light all right. I like it. Now let's take that and some glaze wash medium. Boom. Because now we've had the wash that was the perfect opacity. But if we test this now, right, now that we mix it up, we test this, not so opaque. Back to more like regular paint because we put in opaque paint, right? Makes sense. So now let's thin that back down. Let's double that back up about as much as we have material in there. Maybe not quite as much, right? And then let's use your adult brain cell. I get so sick of how all my number sixes are totally screwed up because I use them as mixing brushes and I'm just an idiot. We talk about it all the time. Well, we talk about it when I start having brushes that need to be cleaned too badly. Use the butt end of your brush to stir, not the the uh, filament end, the hair end. You don't need the hairs to stir the paint. Okay. And then a little spritz of water, just like we did before. Now, when we use this, right, much thinner, okay? Then color, haven't changed the hue at all, much, much thinner. Like a wash. This is what we're going to go airbrush, right? So we're just going to take that, dump it right in here. Right, and that's going to give us the ability to watch the inside of the mouth of the snake there. Layer up like that. We're not going to get a whole punch of color all at once. It's going to allow us to do this and pick our highlights pretty nice. Get a little bit of zoom going here. And right, I'm going to get this line across the neck. This hump up here. So, we get this little cleft that's kind of like his peck right there. His belly, aim down. So, top of his ear. Face, nose, and such. Right? And look at how miraculous our color is. It just fits, right? It's instantly the right color because we used all of the same colors, right? That we had already been using. A little bit right to the right of his belly button here, right? Top of his thigh and knee, right? So running right down that line there. Again, airbrush up top, spraying downward. Light pulses starting where it's the most magenta there, higher to the light. Move down towards the knee. Back up to the thigh, a little bit on the side of the knee there. I'm going to bring a little bit over the side onto the thigh over here. That. Get the shoulder.
Right? Remember, we're painting with such a thin paint here right now. We may have to do this twice, but it's not going to look like your standard airbrushed blob of color. It's going to do a much better job of blending. You, you might laugh. It's like, wait a minute, isn't airbrush already the softest blend? It most certainly is, but it always looks like airbrush. Right? This doesn't look like airbrush. Need to get his bicep as it comes out from underneath this cliff of uh, shoulder there. So this is basically using the airbrush twofold. One for uh, the highlight color itself, but second as a smoothing and way to, uh, again, smooth your blends. We use the wash for that. Now we're using the airbrush for that. At the end of this, you won't be able to tell that we use such sloppy brush strokes when we were building this thing. Okay. Need to have a little bit more highlight up here and then drop it down as we go towards the wrist. Maybe a little bit of brightness on this inner muscle there. So, across the top of the thumb, where we have this dark magenta moving into the flesh tone, I want to catch that area right where the magenta hits the flesh tone and blend that because we've got kind of a hard line magenta into flesh tone that doesn't make sense. So, go right in between there. Still can see the magenta. We go to the flesh, but we blended right in the middle of it with the airbrush. Same thing on the wrist area here, this edge right here. Boom. Probably get a little bit more. See where that brightness on the wrinkle of the thumb is by the knuckle? Get a little bit more there. That. Maybe a little bit of brightness on the pad of the palm on this side too. I don't want to do too much there, so I'm going to have to get in real close. I apologize if I cover this up for you. Right. Boom. That. Also want to get it on, again, it's almost like a carapace, that little roll up his wrist there. So, maybe a little bit right in that area where the muscle of the forearm would be, right along in there. We have a little bit of brightness right here, maybe a little bit along this line here after the shadow. A little bit of brightness in that shadow under the uh, shoulder there is a little dark right in that area. For the Proco line of paints, is your material cost for product out the door in the same ballpark as your big league competitors? Is my material cost for product out the door in the same ballpark as your big league competitors? Our cost is much lower than most of our competitors because we actually make our paint and very few other people do would be my assumption now there is a cost of of um, economy of scale not cost but an economy of scale that 
some of them are making paint in such huge amounts that you know they're they're bottling in such huge amounts that um you know they uh they may have really really good cost on their raw materials but i would guess that our cost controls are much better uh, i'm going to do a little bit more brightness on his belly here like that That, I'm very, very happy with a little bit more on the neck. Brighten up that thigh just a little bit. You see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of moseying around the model, making the brightness work the way I want to. I've got bright skin coming across. I probably want to get a little bit over here, even though this is the shadow side. I have that little spot of highlight. Just a little bit around that. So. And over to here. Arm as it comes up out of shadow. Little knee spot down here. I enjoyed having be a little bright on the thigh and a little bit on the shin and toes too, so we can add a little bit more on his right foot. Not too much. Toes down here. Probably get a little on the inside or on the very top of his calf muscle. Little spritz of brightness in there. Just barely on the inside there. little bit of brightness on each of these knuckles just to the right i need a little bit more brightness right in here yeah you know, that's a little darker than this area out here but they're on the same facing towards the light Need to clean the needle off. You can see how because we're doing so much air and so little paint, see how my needle gets clogged? A little bit of dry tip. Grab a paper towel, and I just pinch the needle real quick. Pull it off. Clear it. Be gentle so you don't bend the needle, obviously. But... There we go. A little bit brighter right in there. That works. I'm going to go ahead and fuzz a little bit into my shadows here. Just gives me a little bit of overspray to pick up like the top of the ear there. 
I think that's okay. And be too troublesome. This hand. Yeah, and we've already set up where the brightness goes, right? It's all to our right of each of these fingers. We just keep the airbrush being that same angle. Start up around the knuckles. I'm shooting at it, and this is what I can see. So you see how everything I can see, actually like that, is what I can see. So everything I can see across the face of the fingers has got this color in it now. right? I didn't move the model while I was spraying because I just want that one angle to get the color on it. That gives me the blend I need. Right? Same thing when I'm going across this way. Kind of look at it like I'm looking at it on high as if I were the uh, the light source, the sun or whatever, right? So here I'm looking at it, and I'm just spraying down on the model as if I were the, the light source. But I'm not changing the angle of the model as I spray so that I only get... The highlight where it needs to go right that's the key i want to get more here at the fatty part where the thumb bulges around the club then here i'll do the same thing but downward again because my light is filtering down the arm so you can see what we have from the dry brush we have kind of a bright spot that goes on the inside but not on the outside we want to correct that now like so I go down a little bit further on the curve of that muscle, it wouldn't be so dark up as high as I got it. Like that. Switch back over to this side where our light's coming from, and now start getting the back. The heel a little bit Go back down that arm again that's our right side of the arm so we don't want too much darkness on it get this calf muscle back here down towards the ankle and heel
I'm liking that. I get a little bit more on these fingers. We've got bright on this one knuckle. Probably a little bit more on the big one next to it, but only out towards the end. So, that looks pretty good. Got the elbow pretty good. Arm, everything's looking pretty good. Maybe a little bit on the butt. Again, this is not where a highlight would be, but it's troll butt. Got a highlight troll butt, right? Get a little bit more brightness right on this part here. I like that. It should do us. I use a little bit of it right here. It's a little hard, this switch from dark skin to light skin. We lose a little blend there, as if the muscle has a, a hard edge to it. I'm just going to use this same color, even though it's a little bright. Just to blend that back a little bit. That's a lot better. Boom. I guess we didn't get the bottom of his ear, did we? Control butt. Very important. Not only make better quality paints, your packaging. You can't wait to uh, keep spending your money at Monument. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. You need to get some hand tattoos, CJ. <laughs> They're like my opacity tracking device, right? All right, let's put this up. Make sure I don't need that color anymore. I still have some mix, but if I'm going to clean the airbrush, I want to make sure I feel pretty good about where we're at with it. I like our shadows, right? Again, if I do a super zoom here, you'll be able to see what we're dealing with and how that airbrushing really doesn't look like airbrushing because how thin our paint is. Notice how nowhere on here have I lost the idea of brush painting. I still have all of that, you know, when we were when we were doing the very heavy-handed loose brush strokes on the skin, one of the things I pointed out is it allows it to look like veining. It's like marbling, right? If I were painting marble or jade or some sort of semi-opaque, um, you know, translucent stone like quartz, you do it in very rough layering. You don't do nice blends, right? You do very rough so that you get that veining and that striation through it. So I do that on skin a lot, right? You see my heavy brush strokes still give me spots where the paint is is thinner and so color bleeds through in weird ways and all of that. We didn't lose that because all we did right now was paint over it with a uh, airbrush coat that was much thinner too. 
And so none of that feels like, you know, if you're not seeing the overspray where we have overspray, you don't feel like we just did a bunch of uh, uh, airbrush on the model. So it can keep airbrushing feeling really good as opposed to making your model look like it's um, out of focus. Because airbrushing a lot of time loses its focus. It blurs it almost in an unnatural way and your blending looks fuzzy. Like you need to put your glasses on. So just do a very thin airbrush. You know, you can use your, your base coats as paintbrush, right? And you can not have to worry about being very, you know, good blender or any of that. You can put them on all wacky. If, if you weren't here yesterday, go back and watch some of yesterday's video. You'll see what I mean. I was literally just slopping paint on this guy. Uh, no rhyme or reason. I mean, there was a rhyme and a reason to it, but I was not trying to blend coats. I was just literally smacking it on there. It looked ugly as hell. We dry brushed over the top of that, which made it look uglier. Then today we put the flesh wash on there as soon as we started the stream. That tied a lot of it together, gave us a really good base coat coloring and, and pulled all our colors together nice, but we thinned it way down. Then we took that wash color, mixed it with our skin tones we had already been using, right? And wound up airbrushing that. And now we get back to kind of that same brightness where we started the day, but we've got a really, really smooth transition of color everywhere that still then has that veining and marbling underneath it because each subsequent layer that we put on has been thinner and thinner and thinner. So we're getting some color, but we're letting everything show through, right? So it, it may seem complicated, but if you really watch how I've done this, you could do everything I've done here. It's going to take some practice and messing up a model or two as you get used to the layering. But as soon as you get it used to thinning your color, this is all basically just ABC a, a paint application. There is no tough technique here. Right. I think the hardest thing you've seen me do, especially today, is getting in close with the airbrush. Right. And doing something like spraying the inside of that ankle bit with just a little bit of color. Right. Or just getting, you know, that little spot on the palm without blowing color everywhere with the airbrush. Right. But you can do all of what I just did with a brush, too. So if that's not your cup of tea with the airbrush, then pull back a step and use the brush. <laughs> Lumberjack Tim, I'm just seeing your your end of the brush comment. What? CJ, you got us on at the shop? Hello, shop. Probably with the volume off so we don't embarrass anybody. If you're smart, you have the volume off at your shop right now. Because I might say poop really loud. <laughs> oh, wait. Our hearts always uh, remain on the sandlot. Nice sandlot reference. And you're all right, man. It's like we talk about it. it we literally talk about it here all the time, right? Um, as we grow, what can we do to not overgrow the way we got here, right? I don't know that there's good words to put into perspective what we're talking about, but it's like don't forget your roots is huge for me, right? And Jen believes the same thing. You know, you guys put us on the map. All we did was make cool stuff, right? There's a lot of companies that make cool stuff that die <laughs> because nobody supports them. So without you, there is no us, and we believe that way. Don't try to unionize, though, chat. I won't, I won't stand for a, a chat union. Uh... Duba Babu says, uh, pretty sure you clogged your airbrush. You're making a peanut butter sandwich and you don't think you thinned your peanut butter enough. Wait. Wait, what? <laughs> Please do not make peanut butter sandwiches with airbrushes. What do you think the worst business decision Monument ever made was? Getting involved with a particular company whose name we never mention again. Mo's Magic. Troll butt is important. The trolling butts. They're trolling buttsin. How can one troll without the butts? <laughs> he doesn't have a lot of cake, Tim. You need to stop hanging out with those kids. You have to use extra creamy peanut butter. The, the crunchy definitely clogs it up. No unions, just gamers and painters. Unite, support your local hobby nerds. 
Duba Baba says smart. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm liking where we're at. In order to go brighter, I think it is the airbrush. And now I want to switch over to maybe some warm flesh. We talked about it yesterday that warm flesh was probably the right choice. Uh, but we needed to get back to the fleshy tones with the magentas and the purples that we've been using here. Gotta wash the airbrush out real quick. Move that to the side. Boom. Again, we're using a 0 0.2 needle here. And I just want to run a cup or two of water through. I really don't even need to run another cup through because we're staying in flesh tones. Um, as long as you keep liquid in the airbrush, you don't have to worry about what colors are in there. So long as it's okay to mix them, right? Like if I'm going to a warm flesh out of the flesh tones we just did, I feel pretty comfortable mixing those. So a little bit of this flesh tone that was in there doesn't bother me. Make sense? So you don't have to get the paintbrush completely clean between colors, assuming that the next color that you're about to spray um, is either on hue or in the same family or tone, or you just don't care if they get mixed. Sometimes you can do blue and then spray red and not worry about it because you're you're really looking to uh, maybe blend it on the model. So if it's blended in the cup, same difference to some extent. Warmasters Forge uh, says, but with a monument hobby knife, is the front section of the handle meant to pull off? Yes. Oh, you have a habit of breaking stuff if you just yank on it. Yes. So retreat the blade into the knife, right? And then you can, there's a tab right there. You can push on that tab, but I don't. I always just kind of pop it off, right? You just kind of give it a, a quick jiggle, and it'll pop. But that tab is the, the release tab, okay? Then you've got the blade. Take the blade out of the hook. Set it back into that cleat. When you get a new one, retreat it back in, right? We got the metal raceway that keeps this safe, right? And then just put that on there, snap it back on. Now you're back to running. Ta-da! Easy peasy. It said all that on the back of the package that you threw away. <laughs> it, if you look at the back of the, the back of the box, where the instructions are, I know, bad word. I know, I get it. Bad word. <laughs> so it's on that thing that you had. <laughs> All right, we're going to take the same paint that we just did. We don't want to mix this much. So we're going to take the same thing and just ruin another cup here, right? And uh, pour a little bit in there. Boom. Then we're going to put a little bit of warm flesh. Now, I could go with dark warm flesh, and it, we might find that this is the same color that I'm going to create, right? It may be that I'm about to just create dark warm flesh, but I don't think so. Actually, I'm going to take the open bottle of warm flesh that I have up here. You were, in, you were supposed to read the instructions and say, what? What kind of crack are you smoking? Man, if you're like me, everything comes out of the package and anything other than the thing that I'm supposed to own goes right in the garbage. <laughs> right, right in the garbage. Your instructions be damned. We live in an age where half the time the instructions aren't even written in a language I can understand. 
So, I get it. But every now and then, folks, all right, we're going to start with two drops. Right, I'm going to start pretty conservatively here. I just dipped the butt end of my paintbrush for stirring into the, uh, the water. As, like if that was going to matter. Sorry, that's not, that's not how that works. And that's perfect. Two drops was perfect. Remember, so I could, I could sit here and lie and say there's some sort of science behind it. I, I'm certain there is, but because we don't normally mix saying I've done exactly, you know, uh, 2.5 microliters of paint, you know, I don't know. So I put two drops in there, but just remembering that the paint we're putting it into is very, very translucent. It's very thin because we diluted it with the uh, glazed wash medium and a little bit of water. It's not thin from a thickness standpoint. It still rolls like paint, not like water, right? But it's thin from a visual standpoint. Its opacity has been reduced. So I don't need to put a lot of paint into it to change the color because there's just not a lot of color necessarily, if you want to think about it that way, in what was there, even though there was more liquid well, huzzah, huzzah. there. Does that make sense? So it looked like we had a lot of paint and you might feel like, oh, I need the color to be 50-50, so you put as much of your bright color in as you had liquid of the other color. But remember, you have to take into account the opacity of the color that's already there. And that's why two drops got us exactly the color we wanted. If I had to put any more than that, this would have basically just been warm flesh. So I hope that made sense. When you're mixing, always think about the opacity of both components that you're mixing. If you're mixing in one very opaque color into a transparent color, like what we just did, um, then don't put as much of the opaque color because it's going to overtake everything you've just done. Right? If, on the other hand, you're putting a, a transparent color into an opaque color, you might have to use more. That's then just depending on what color you're going for. Okay, so now we've added a thicker paint in there, more opacity. So we're going to bleed that back in with a little bit more glaze wash medium. Again, I'm just erring on the side of caution. I'm putting about 50-50, uh, right? So if I have X amount of liquid in the bottle or in the, the cup, I'm going to put that much flow of the uh, glaze wash medium in there too. Sounds good. And then a little spritz of water. And then that'll get us the opacity we want. Why do I use the glaze wash medium? It keeps the paint thick enough to spray with without it going spidery all over the place. Because when we're doing really, really thin opacity painting with the airbrush, right? If we get it too thin viscosity-wise too, then it starts spider webbing all over the place. It's very hard to control. It skates, causes problems. So the glaze wash medium through the airbrush works like a dream and keeps the paint feeling like paint, right? And then just a little bit of water to thin its viscosity flow a little bit better, right? There we go. Now we got our color. Bam. A little test. See the mouth of my snake where we did the previous color. And that highlight color is what's going to sit in there. Okay. Again, we'll start up around this neck area. I'm just going to do a spray, kind of sit it inside that highlight. Like that. Just along the top now. The other highlight, I brought down the ridges of the skin a little bit. This time, just that brightness up top. Same thing on this fold back there. Just little bits at a time. That's probably enough for now. Don't want to overtake the color that I just did. I will get the top of the ear again. I'll rotate the model so I can get the top of the ear without spraying directly into the face. Want to turn it to where I'm looking like that, right down the eyebrow and lip and nose, so that I can just have the paint skate right down 
those features and act more like a dry brush highlight than anything. I'm going to get just the tip of the chin. I'm basically wanting to paint my finger and just use the overspray to get the tip of the chin there. A little bit on his nostril. A little more on his nostril. There we go. Just a little bit on the peck, like right here. So, got to be careful now that we're going brighter, that we don't get too much color pushed into the shadows. We're going to do the top of the belly. So the belly it has this, this curve that's going to go, we're going to start like right around here, and then we're going to go right around the top, but we're going to leave it alone down in here. like that kind of see the way I did that right in that curve just along the top there might want to bring it down just a little bit in the front that Maybe just a hint right here by the belly button. So. Now we don't want to take this too far down the model, right? Remember what happens when we take our brightest colors all the way down to the feet. Right? We wind up brightening up the entire model, and now we got to find a way to find contrast on it again. And we wind up then having to go brighter than we may want to go. I don't know that I want to go any brighter than this on the skin. I feel like this looks pretty good. You like the creaminess of the, the glaze wash? Yeah, it's intended to be a, uh, a fairly thick medium. Uh, it's a little bit thicker than the base paints on purpose. a little bit there at the tip of his bicep. We want to leave that shadow coming out from underneath the, the shoulder there.
And I can play with this by keeping that airbrush back a little bit, and it'll just blend. So if I pull it back three or four inches and just kind of, you know, pulse it into my area, I can get it to blend. That's what I just did to get the bicep or the uh, shoulder muscle to fade from where I have it bright here to fade down into my other colors. Blissfully unaware. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? Eating it? Why are the instructions... They make good fire paper? Rottweiler, thank you for the 10 months, by the way. Will the knife take different shapes of blades? It will not take different shapes. If you talk about like the chisel tip and things like that, they won't possibly pass through the, uh, the cap. So you got to check that. It will take all of this number 11 style like hobby blades, right? There may be a couple of the other ones that'll go through there. You just have to make sure it'll fit through the slot on the end of the cap. Since the glaze medium doesn't... Oh, I got it. If it doesn't taste like anything, if you wanted to eat some dark umber, but don't really... I'm not walking harder. You're, you're, a, you're a bad influence. <laughs> you're bad. Don't eat the paint. Don't eat the plate. Stop it. Phoenix, exactly. Oh, my God, you people. They're like, literally, it's like, it's like a cook-off show, except they're talking about how to prepare paint. Heretics, all of you. A little bit of brightness at the top of the thigh. And then I don't think we'll go with any brightness down further on the leg. Maybe a pinch at the knee. Just a spot of brightness right there on the side of the knee like that. I think we're done. I don't want to put any down here on the, the leg. We start losing depth at that point. I like it just here on the uh, corner of the area of the thumb there. Might do a little bit right here. There. Maybe a little bit on the pinky finger. I don't know if it's technically a pink. Is pinky just the last finger, no matter how many you have? Not sure. I'm not going to brighten up these knuckles because they kind of aren't really in line for that. I mean, I don't know, maybe. I don't know. Do they get blocked? They don't really get blocked by the hammer, do they? All right. Never mind. I lied. A little bit of brightness on the knuckles. No brightness down here, not on this knee, no over here on the belly or whatever. Maybe a little bit over on the arm when we get over there, but doesn't really have to be. I kind of like it the way it is. Maybe a little bit on this calf. But not much, because again, we're way down on the bottom of the model. Okay, so up here, we want to get this side of this hunch muscle group. Maybe start over here and make a little bit of a upside down J, right? Or lowercase r. I don't know what you call that. that it just kind of does a little bit of that curve i'm gonna pull the brush back about five or six inches and just kind of 
falls into that whole area. That'll blend it in. Over here. Pretty good. A little bit of brightness on the hump there on the back. Brighten it up here just a little bit, but not too much. Here I'd spray like three times to get that built up. Here like once or twice. And a little bit more. And I'm going to jump over to the shoulder. Like that. I think we're back over here. A little bit down this forefinger here, just down this front edge here. I like that. Nothing on the next one. That looks pretty good. There you go. Troll skin. Dunzos, I think. I'm going to put the... At this stage, I always put the paintbrush down for a second. Take a step back and look at it. <laughs> and see, see what we think before we start washing out the airbrush. 